Okay, so in this video today, I'm going to be talking about buffers and interrupts, of course. So, probably thinking, well, I know all about buffers. I watch Netflix, I've seen it buffer or YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But have you ever thought about how modern technology is keeping up with our demands? Have you thought about how hardware actually is not as fast as the processor? So have you really thought about the role of the buffers and the interrupts in your computer and how they serve you as the user? Keep watching my video to find out more. Firstly, we're going to look at what buffers are. Now, you're probably looking at these images and thinking, why have we got trains? Well, um, I can use public transport as an example here. Then I'm going to explain to you how that fits into our computer system. So, when you're using public transport, well, trains mostly, trains are fitted with buffers. So, when the carriages are actually in motion, so as you can see here, they go along the tracks. Now, when they go along the tracks, um, what happens is, is those tracks may move up and down. So, therefore, so do the carriages. So, they'll make this clanging sound. And that sound, obviously, metal on metal can be quite awful. Um, so, when you move in between carriages, you may feel the trains actually going up and down. You see the carriages moving. So, the buffers are actually placed here to absorb the sound. So you're probably thinking, how does that work with a computer? Well, let's go through that. Now, when computers are streaming data, obviously the data can go through the stream like all at once. However, the processor can do its job very, very quickly as we're in modern technology now. But hardware, needs to do what it needs to do and with hardware there's some things that cannot really be sped up such as printing maybe burning discs and so on they take as long as they need to and they take as long as the hardware needs to take so our memory buffers are there to simply stream the data so what they do is, is they act as a temporary memory to buffer that accepts the streams of the data at a defined rate, then stores it and then streams it out again. So really, you can think of our buffers as kind of like a waiting area. So, the data can be loaded very quickly, the application can perform another task while it's waiting, and so on. So you're probably thinking, well, why does it need to perform another task when it's waiting? So let's take a look further into this. Firstly, think about why we need the buffers and think about what I said to you earlier. Now, modern devices do simply do not work as fast as the processor. They just don't. The processor can actually process you know, data within split seconds, okay? So process the data so fast. Our devices can't do that. So you may recognize this coming up on your screen when you're streaming a video. And if we take a look at here, so here's the data. So this data could be anything. It could be sound, it could be video, it could be anything. So it goes through the system here, and you can see the buffer is queuing up these bits of data. So, for example, if we're streaming a video card, uh, a video, we've got a video card, we've got a sound card. Those are the hardware. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched a video and you've seen the sound completely out of sync with the video. So, that can obviously happen. That's where our hardware can't quite catch up. Then the data simply gets passed on. So the buffer will queue it up. Now, if it wasn't for buffers, then the processor would constantly just be waiting for something to do. But what the processor can do is the processor can constantly process the data. Process the data, process the data and process it. And the buffer will queue those pieces of data up. Here's an example. Netflix. So Netflix is absolutely massive these days. It's huge. Now, 
I don't know if you've done this, but I've seen, I've done this so many times. I've had se several applications open up my computer, okay? So what I would do is I'm one of those people that, well, my attention span's quite short. So what I do is, is I will have some work on one application, such as PowerPoint. And then I'll have something else open, like maybe some web pages, um, maybe some online books and so on and then I've actually got a Netflix video playing in a corner so I've got three applications all at once so the buffers are commonly used in video streaming so they stream your videos and they will prevent the video from stopping and playing back so what the video would be doing is what my process is doing my processor is processing data for the work and the video and the video is actually you know the buffer is actually queuing up the video ready to play so now we're going to go through some other um, types of buffers so here's a print buffer or it's also known as a print spooler now you may have come across these so in your classroom um, you may may have 26 13 computers how many printers do you have in a classroom I hope you said one maybe you have two okay so what um, people do is, is they tend to have or classrooms tend to have a print spooler set up which is just a buffer so the teacher may say towards the end of the class okay class please everybody send your work to the printer so 30 children are sending their work to the printer now the printer cannot print 30 children's pieces of work all at once okay some children may have one page some children may have two some children may have five and there's absolutely no way that the printer can do that so what the buffer does is the buffer will queue the print jobs so it stores the print job so it's not basically you pressing print 30 40 50 times because you've missed your slot so the printer will the buffer will simply queue it for the printer and say right you've got this job to do first so the name of the document, the status, the time, the number of pages, etc. and where it's come from, the student. So it may say, okay, print the buffer document. And the status at the moment is printing. The time is 12.46 and the number of pages is two. And then the status may change from um, printing to action or queuing to printing. Then you've got a DVD buffer. Now obviously DVDs, CDs and so on take time to burn. So what happens on these discs is all the data gets turned into little pits and lines and so on. That takes time to do because the laser is physically burning the data onto that DVD to be read by the hardware. So that will take time. There's, you know, there's no way that a DVD can be printed in a millisecond. So what happens is, as all this data goes onto the DVD, it can be anything, it could be images, it could be files, um, usually movies, the movies would be about, I don't know, two hours, um, lots of colours, HD definition and so on. That is a lot of data to print. So what the processor does is the processor will simply process all of that data very, very quickly but there's absolutely no way the hardware can possibly print it as quickly as the um, processor processes it. So the buffer is their job to actually queue each part of that data that needs printing. So the application program will work with the hardware to burn the data onto the DVD. So as you can see, the buffer reads it and, the and then it says how much is completed. So the hardware will work as the buffer stores the data ready to be burnt onto that disk. Now let's move on to interrupts. So we've got our buffers. Now interrupts and buffers um, sometimes tend to work together and I'm going to use trains again as an example. So what I'm using here is the London Tube. Now the reason why I'm using the London Tube is because the London Tube runs a lot of trains in very short spaces of time okay so you could be in central london for example 
and there will be trains coming every one to two minutes each one of those trains is still be busy the platform is still filling up okay so there has to be signals now an interrupt is simply a form of a signal when the signal is red the train has to stop the reason why the train has to stop is because there's something else in the way that it could collide with so if we look at a picture underneath here you can see there's lots of trains queued up then you can see there's a train moving forward now this train here takes priority right so because this is the oncoming train this train has to wait so the signal will say stop to this train wait until this train goes forward because this train is the priority so an interrupt is basically a function that allows multitasking and multiprocessing to work so everything is still working everything is still processing london underground is still moving um, this train is still moving this train has had to stop for a bit because this one is the priority so once this train's passed this train can start moving so on our OS system our operating system the interrupt is a signal that prompts the OS to stop work on one task and start on another otherwise our operating system will have this bit of data going through the system so and so, so imagine for example our OS system will not allow this train to move until this train has gone all the way up the line okay so think about the central line the central line has oh I don't know how many stops but let's think the central line has got 50 stops so our operating system will not allow this train to move until this train has completed its 50 stops well our interrupt what it will do is we'll say no stop work on that task for the moment let this task move through once this task has moved through stop work on that task let it run and then this one will work which will make more sense and that is how the trains would continue to go through the tunnel um, or go through the central line every one to two minutes so imagine that as an operating system where these trains are data so the data can continue to run through the operating system, run through the processor, but it prioritizes other tasks. So imagine our interrupt as simply a signal man. So how does it work on our computer? Well, an interrupt is actually central to the design of an operating system, okay? Because an operating system is linear. So as I discussed with our trains earlier, if we allow one task to be completed at a time then our operating system would be so slow and it would not work for us so this means it will complete one task at a time and move on to the next is finished that is no good so the interrupt says no hang on this one takes priority first stop that task for the moment switch to this one complete that then go back to the other one so then that way it's actually working to our convenience so when do interrupts occur? Well, they can occur when a disk drive is ready to simply receive more data. So it may stop the disk drive or start the disk drive. Um, if an error has occurred, like a paper jam in a printer, then the queue on the buffer will stop. The error will come up and says, sort out the paper jam, then it will continue to work. Otherwise, it will believe that every single job has already been processed and those jobs may be deleted um, you can actually interrupt um, a process by pr uh, pressing the control alt and break keys at the same time or a software error every software um, well most software is not every as a rule but have exe files to actually execute software if that file is not there an error will occur and then the system is interrupted right hope that was insightful to you Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. I will be making videos on a weekly basis and um, you'll get updates as they become available, particularly coming up towards exam time and so on. 
Um, don't forget to like my videos, please. That would be so helpful. Teachers, visit my shop on Tess. I have many free resources and also very cheap uh, resources of high quality. Follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to click on the description, the link on the description to download my free activity for you to complete. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.